OL Hill Residences be one of the best low quantum property investments of 2021 in District 9. Today we're going to dive into this brand new development that's going to be launched uh, in terms of its preview date towards the end of March and uh, you should really watch until the end and we're going to discuss and dive deep uh, based on the information that we have now and we hope that this episode will help you to make an informed decision. So let's go. Once or level two, you actually have height advantage. Based on your current uh, property portfolio, what is the level of risk? Project name is called Irwell Hill Residences. This is a D9 development in Orchard area. Let's bring out the map and show you the demarcation of the boundary of D9, D10 and District 3. Now, as you look at Great World City, there are actually three different boundary lines when we talk about D9 being on the right-hand side towards River Valley. And of course, that is where Irwell Hill Residences will be located at. And of course, on the left-hand side, there's a start point of D10 as well. At the down portion, uh, that's where D3, which is Tiong Baru, is being starting at. So Great World City in recent years has received a lot of attention, partly because of the MRT station uh, in terms of the Thompson East Coast Line, which is going to be the underground MRT station. And you can actually walk from Great World City. There's going to be a link right off the mall itself that's going through towards the MRT station. Of course, from Great World City MRT station, that will be one stop towards Orchard. And the moment you come out from Orchard, that will be Orchard Ion. So of course, a lot of buyers that is going to D9 and 10, they are looking at Great World City, especially the properties and projects that is within the circumference of the entire mall, starting all the way from Cosmopolitan downwards towards uh, Centennial Suites, and then moving on to the left-hand side on Zion Road from Zenith, Mill Point, Valley Park, and all the way towards upwards at Tiara area. I would say this entire circumference of projects has received a lot of attention, especially in the past two years when buyers are anticipating for the MRT station to be open. Greenwood City has just undergone a revamp in terms of the shopping mall itself. So now is a beautiful new mall. So you are paying the PSF of River Valley of Zion Road, but you get to enjoy the best of both worlds, Greenwood City Mall as well as Orchard Island, and it's all connected just based on one MRT stop. So let's zoom back to Irwell Hill Residences and some of the quick facts. Quick facts, this is at District 9. Developer is CDL, City Developments Limited. And of course, this time around, they have gotten uh, ADDP as the principal architect. They've also gotten a concept architect from Netherlands, NVRDV. And of course, um, the site area is pretty decent because it's standing at about 130 odd thousand uh, square feet uh, in terms of its land size. Square meters is about 12,786.5 square meters. 99 years leasehold development. As we all know now, it's getting increasingly difficult to see a freehold new launch development with at least a 500 unique type of density. Um, and so most of the launches, of course, in recent years, they are all 99 years in nature. And District 9, 10, 11 is no stranger to 99 years launches as well. And I think this is just something that we need to get used to. So the 99's land starts from year 2020 and uh, expected TOP is going to be in 2026 on paper. Irwell Hill Residences is located right across Cosmopolitan. It's also located in front of Lonnie Towers as well as Riva Lodge. Um, diagonally, that will be Tiara followed by Great World City Mall. And the nearest MRT station is going to be Great World. 120 meters to the entrance from the side gate and that will approximately be about two minutes walk. You have primary schools within one kilometer and that's River Valley Primary School plus Alexandra Primary School. Of course, a lot of international schools nearby. ISS International, Eton House International, you have Finnish Supplementary School, Norwegian Supplementary School, Furun International, Dynamics International. If you have seen condo prices trending up over the past few quarters, you could be forgiven for thinking you have missed the boat, but not every ship in the property market has sailed, especially in the central core region where the URA price index has yet to break previous highs, unlike the RCR and OCR region. So if we look at the URA non-landed residential price index, you have noticed that not every ship in the property market has sailed because uh, especially in the CCR region, core central region, the URA price index has yet to break previous highs unlike the RCR and OCR region. Obvious catalysts in the horizon such as the projected economic recovery, lifting of travel restrictions, hopefully, is merely a matter of time 
time before CCR property prices play catch up. Uh, the window for value buys, I think, is narrowing, uh, which is why the new Irwell Hill Residences has really caught the eye with a sub $1 million starting price for its studio units in D9. To be realistic, most of the units will be priced between $1 to $1.1 million onwards, which is still attractive because there are currently no new launch condos at that quantum within a one kilometers radius at Orchard MRT station. Resale condos at that price range, although freehold, are typically boutique condos with perhaps uh, a lower rental yield due to the lack of condo facilities compared to bigger scale developments. And of course, we all know that the larger size development sometimes has a little bit of a higher tick up rate when it comes to tenancy, um, transition period and a lower vacancy period due to perhaps the amount of facilities that it offers for tenants. For this development, there's a lot of ground to cover when it comes to investment potential. Irwell Hill Residences is the first 99-year leasehold D9 development to hit the market in 2021. And of course, right off the bat, the lower quantum leasehold properties generally translates to a higher rental yield because of a lower quantum uh, in terms of its overall investment pricing. So even when we assume medium prices of Irwell Hill Residences, studio units to be around perhaps 1.03 million thereabout and is one plus study to be in the range of perhaps 1.2 to 1.3 million range. This still puts the development in a very commanding position versus competing new launch condos in the D9 and the central region. So let's take a look at this table where we look at the lowest quantum comparison uh, which is $1.5 million and below just for comparison sake among new launch condos in D9 and the central area. If we look at the landmark uh, which is in District 3, the 99's development, the one bedrooms are going at about 968000 starting from um, and this is based on March 2021 pricing. Overall starting price will be from about 1.03 million estimated medium price and that will be at about 2,500 plus per square foot and all these are still indicated because we are heading towards the preview. Prices are subject to change. This is a disclaimer on our portion and when we look at Copa which is at Newton, 99 years new launch as well. We are not sure of the exact pricing yet but let's take it as 1.1 plus and 1.2 million dollars onwards for Irwell 1 plus study units. And of course we have other comparisons like RB Altitude which is Freehold together with House on Handy and Revere which is in D3 as well on the corner side of Great World City. And we have Avenue, which is freehold in River Valley, and the one bidders are doing at $1.4 million onwards. And then coming back to Irwell, the two bidders are estimated to start from about $1.5 million onwards. So we only have to look at RV altitude to see just how popular shoebox condo units in D9 in recent months have become. Uh, the project's one bidder units are now fully sold. So for those who have missed out on RV altitude, logically the next option considering that they are less than 400 meters apart will be Irwell Hill Residences going from a smaller size project which is freehold to perhaps considering these 540 units larger scale development with studio and one bidder unit choices. Some key observations to point out is that seemingly out of 540 units, the developer seems to have focused on Studio 1 beta and 2 beta units. Just have a look at the breakdown. Studio, there are only 33 units. So I think if you're really looking the, at the lowest quantum, you should really snap up the Studio ASAP on the preview date itself. One plus study, you have 102 units available. And then the highest level of percentage will be on the 2-bit classic and 2-bit premium. In totality, these two kinds of 2 beders layout will form close to 300 units of the entire project itself. So when we look at 3 and 4 beders, they are really of a very small population because the 3 bits classic, there are only 33 of them. 3 bits premium, there are only another 33 of them. And for 4 beders, another 33 units. Meaning that the developers are only building one stack each for 3 bits classic, 3 bits premium and 4 beders. And of course, you have some sky pen houses which are the 4 beders and the 5 beders as well. And of course, something to note is that the maintenance fee is also kept to a very nice quantum with the studio starting from $325, uh, 2 beders starting from $390 and three beds is ranging from $390 to about $455. So quantum-wise, in terms of maintenance fee, it looks very decent because uh, most properties in Orchard, when you look at three, four beds in terms of maintenance fee, it will definitely scale up to a certain level. At the same time, buyers should also take a serious look at the two bedroom classic units at Irwell Hill Residences, which have a very palatable median quantum of, of $1.55 million starting from. And of course, starting PSF of prices that is below 2,500 plus per square foot for this unit type is actually the lowest for the entire development. <music> 
Moving on to comparative analysis, when we look at D9 right now, especially within the one kilometers radius from Orchard MRT that we talk about, you'll find that there is a scarcity in supply of new launch condos with low quantum. That's because many developers would position these projects as high-end luxury developments targeted at ultra high net worth buyers. And of course, they will definitely pour in a lot of investment and money to up the luxury ente while also hoping to get a perhaps higher profit margin for such units because when buyers buy something near to Orchard MRT and Orchard Boulevard they are really looking for the luxurious ultra high-end kind of project and not just buying the address they are also buying the price point as well and thus as a result there will be very few studio units within the D9 area zoning uh, for a like to like comparison you will have to look as far as probably the m at district 7 bookies where studio units were fully sold upon launch in q1 last year at a median psf price of two thousand five hundred dollars per square foot and of course bear in mind that the ccr property price index has increased by 1.9 percent since then in the space of three quarters Put this with the fact that Irwell hill location is considered more prime and is somewhat still priced at the same $2,500 per square foot range based on the information that we have now and we think for Irwell Hill residences. And right across the road from Irwell Hill is Prime District 10. So to put things in perspective, here's a round of some new launch condos their median transacted PSF price in the past year. Again, Irwell Hill residences sits at a competitive end of the price range. Another thing is that Irwell Hill residences is the only new launch development with sub $2,700 plus per square foot that's within one kilometers of the Orchard Road shopping belt and five minutes walking distance to an MRT station. In fact, this project will just be 120 meters from the exit of the upcoming Great War MRT station on the Thompson East Coast MRT line. Some fun fact to note is also that D9 also sees higher foreign buyer demand with 37% of buyers being foreigner and permanent residents compared to 30% for District 10. So what this means is that for the same PSF and Quantum Medina property, might be able to position an investor to really take advantage of the post-COVID recovery. Now let's take a look at some comparative analysis of resale condos near a well hue residences. And uh, buyers who opt to buy resale condos for investment are typically confident of two things. First, they can take of course the full installment upfront. And secondly, that there's ready tenant demand perhaps if they're considering to buy a unit uh, with tenancy or planning to buy a unit um, in the resale market to rent out. And of course, we all know that the pandemic has somehow changed the market a little bit, although the rental market hasn't taken too much of a hit as was expected at the start of the pandemic. Uh, some buyers, they prefer to buy a newly launched condo where the completion date will likely coincide with a full economic recovery uh, later on in the upcoming years, perhaps closer to maybe 2023 or 2024. And this is something that really appeals to those who are stepping up to buy their very first investment property right now. So we think that a couple of this reason, this project might really do well. Not forgetting that we also have the current low interest rate environment. Uh, putting money down for a low quantum unit at a prime location seems like the perfect low risk, low initial outlay for potentially even for conservative minded investors with the progressive payment in place. Uh, that said, it turns out that there are a handful of one-bedroom resale options under $1 million in the vicinity right here. And here are the five most recent transactions in 2021 and their corresponding median rent. So considering the above Devonshire residences, which is the only condo in the list within a four-minute walk to an MRT station at Somerset, uh, is the obvious standout in terms of median rent for 506 square feet type of unit. Here's an interesting detail is that if you subtract that unit's massive 10 square meters balcony and planter, you will still get the same area that's very similar to the studio unit at Irwell Hill Residences. And of course, that's only if you're not a balcony or bay window lover, you'll find that the Irwell Hill Residences studio units are highly space efficient and functional. But of course, if you are unable to get a studio unit at launch because there's only 30 plus of them, you can uh, then opt for the one plus study units, which has two options because there are one plus study with balcony and one plus study without balcony. Thereby judging by the quantum 
or whether is it 1.1 plus, 1.2 plus million dollars, you can see if it's worth the get go. So if you look at this rental demand chart, uh, we think that the rental demand for one bedroom condos in D9 has been steadily increasing in the past decade or so. So in 2012, one out of eight condo units rented out in the prime district, they were one beta units. And right now, one beta make up one out of every four units rented in D9. So the proportion of one bedroom units rented in D9 is also higher than the central region average in 2020, um, which is 23.7% versus 22.4%. In the first two months of 2021, 25.3% versus 23.1% according to the URE release data. So when buying a centrally located one bedroom condo unit with rentability in mind, one of the first locations to logically consider would be D9, especially when the quantum is right. Now let's move on to micro location price performance and uh, judging by Irwell's Hill recent advantage, uh, by now you might have realized that not every neighborhood within a prime district is equal. So for condo units within a 500 meters of this 27 year old private apartment right next to Irwa, which is called Riva Lodge, we find that the price performance um, to be robust over the past 20 years period compared to the entire D9. Looking specifically at the three year period to 2000, we see that the medium PSF resale price for units near Irwell Hill residences trended upward despite prices for D9 overall trending down during that period in year 2000. Now let's take a quick dive and look at some of the pricing performance of the projects that is within the circumference of Great World City. So take note because of the fact that towards Kim Seng Road, that is the D9 boundary and of course towards Zion Road, that's the D10 boundary. There is a significant price difference between the projects uh, in terms of PSF and of course in terms of overall quantum. And of course, there are various different factors such as the age of the development, the size of the project as well. Something interesting to note is that if you want to land yourself a unit at a Cosmopolitan or Trillium for 2 beta, definitely it will be scaling towards the $3 million range because of its sure size. And of course, looking at the three projects Projects that is on the Kim Seng Road area and on the right hand side of Great World City. Uh, starting from Cosmopolitan, if you want to land yourself a two bedroom, and of course, Cosmo is a freehold development together with Trillium and Centennial Suites. Cosmopolitan two bedrooms are from $2.8 million onwards because of its sheer size of the layout itself, starting from about 1,001 plus square feet for its two bedroom. If you head downwards to Trillium, which is a larger development, freehold as well. A two bedroom there will start from $3 million because the size is of course 1,000 plus square feet also for its two bedroom. As you head on to Santana Suites, two bedrooms are about 1,200 plus square feet. It will start from about $3.2 million onwards. And if we flip over to the other side of Great World City, on the left hand side, and that's towards the Zion Road region, starting point of D10, projects such as Zenith, Mill Point, two bedrooms are at about $1.8 million plus minus, um, trending upwards towards 1.9 mil. And uh, Valley Park is an older development but a large scale project. The two bedrooms there are really doing at about $2 million. Uh, Melrose Park, they are all huge units, three and four beders. There's no two beders available. And of course, if we head upwards towards Tiara, which is at the top portion of Great World City Mall, Tiara two beders is already doing close to about $2 million. And we think it might be a good opportunity to enter this zoning right here in terms of quantum play because you are buying a one beder or two beder with something that is less than $2 million. And of course, if you look across uh, Tiara and that's Irwell Hill Residences, we think that it will be a good quantum play for the two beders as well, starting from 1.55 mil onwards. And uh, as long as you get something that's below 2 mil, it will definitely be a good opportunity to enter a D9 project that's brand new. Of course, it's 99 years. It will still be below $2 million in terms of quantum play. So with possible future upside and growth drivers, chances are that property value in the neighborhood of this development might continue its upward momentum. Uh, this also means that the developer can be confident of revising prices upwards post-launch, uh, which we think is a certainty once the CCR prices index picks up the pace. So some indications of future upside and growth potential in this region uh, we think that this project is positioned nicely in the corridor that lines up Orchard Road, Great World City and Singapore River for convenience and accessibility to almost anywhere in the city. And the clearest upside comes from the upcoming Great World City MRT uh, station at the Thompson East Coast Line. In future, from the side gate of Irwell Hill, 
If you were to own a unit right there, you will find that you can just walk 120 meters sheltered uh, walkway to the entrance of the MRT station. And because this MRT station that is underground is going to be a huge station with various different exit points. So uh, it's a key advantage to projects that's surrounding the Great World Station. So from there, you can get a CBD station such as Maxwell, Shenton Way, just under 10 minutes, Botanic Gardens in 15 minutes, and of course, Orchard is just one stop. Coming back to the facade, these two projects are having that kind of botanical feel and a premium luxury feel kind of uh, facade if you would just have a look at the, the visualization in terms of the image of this building itself and of course there's going to be four heritage trees that is located within the 540 units development. We think that the doorstep proximity to the MRT station gives uh, this project a very high advantage among condos right here in River Valley especially considering that this neighborhood has hilly terrain in fact the short 220 meters walk from RB altitude to the Great World MRT station has also a 9 meters change in elevation uh, but we observed that the 120 meters from Irwell Hill uh, is almost flat ground but no matter what the 120 meters proximity is as good as it gets anywhere in Singapore and on top of that being able to stand in the heart of Orchard in five minutes after leaving your house, I think to us is the very definition of prime district living. So speaking of Orchard, the TEL will intersect with the existing north-south line in the Orchard station to create an interchange. And according to URA master plan, the massive plot of land that is on top of the Orchard TEL station stretching all the way from Grange Road to Patterson Road has been zoned for future residential and commercial development. And the land directly on top of the tracks could actually be turned into a park. So this expansion of Orchard we think presents upside for Irwell Hill as well in two ways. Firstly, new and additional retail, commercial and recreational amenities could boost uh, the attractiveness of living in Patterson, Lonnie Hill areas of D9, in particular rentability for investors. Secondly, the residential developments that will eventually rise up above the TEL station will likely be luxury condos similar to the Orchard residences above Iron Orchard and we think that these new developments will likely set new price highs in terms of price quantum and PSF ranges and uh, they could create a spillover effect that pulls up the resale prices of condos in the entire vicinity and uh, without directly competing with Irwell Hill residences. So another positive thing that we think could potentially happen is that the empty plot of land um, that's directly north of Irwell Hill is currently a reserve site that means that that has not been zoned and assigned a definite use but in the event if you already decides to eventually zone this land as residential and uh, if a new condo pops up then the buyers of Oahu residences would have had a first mover advantage and a significant one at this very time where CCR prices appear to be at a relatively low base still. Now the connectivity enabled by TEL will be the main driver in pushing up rents for condos within walking distance of the Great World MRT station but just how much in rental you can property investors expect if they buy into a studio or one beta plus study unit at Irwell Hill Residences. And we think that the next most important thing to note for investors that are buying the studio and one plus study units for investment purposes is that firstly, we look at the overall quantum. Uh, we also look at attributes like the area's rentability and vacancy uh, rate. Uh, the third thing to of course note is also the maintenance fee. So as mentioned at the start of this video, the 300 over dollars for studios and one beta units right here we think that this sits at the lower range in CCR zoning. So last but not least, is this the right point in the cycle to buy right now in the year 2021 in District 9? Uh, perhaps some skeptics will continue to point out that the risk in investing in CCR properties uh, citing examples from projects nearby such as Sky Park or OUE Twin Peaks uh, picking up transactions with capital losses to highlight the potential downsides. It is true that during the period of between 2011 and 2013, there were a handful of prime district developments that rode the wave of a cycle near its peak because at that point, developers were perhaps setting prices that were far beyond the market value at that time and everybody was caught off guard by the cooling measures um, that was in place uh, starting from 2013 to 2017 and that period between 2013 and 2017 uh, due to the cooling of the property market using measures and regulations has perhaps led to a downward moderation of property pricing in the CCR zone where most buyers has been foreign investors in the past. This has perhaps hurt some buyers that bought near the peak and did not have the holding power to see the cycle through to recovery and upswing. But of course, all said and done, we're now in a very different property market compared to seven years ago. 
the government's successive uh, cooling measures over the past few years, it has suppressed the potential of a breakneck windfall making kind of price growth, but without curbing organic upside and capital appreciation from urban development and economic progress. So we think that the uptrends quickly returned following the implementation of additional cooling measures in July 2018. And of course, again, after this COVID-19 circuit breaker was lifted last year in 2020, that demonstrated a lot of pent up demand and believe that we are far from the market top. So especially as prices in OCR and RCR are also pushing up upstream, CCR, we think that now in 2021 is a very good opportunity to buy into. So the truth is, Singapore is still very far from an overheating property market. Otherwise, an opportunity like Oahu residences wouldn't exist. Stay prudent and stay tuned for our full in-depth uh, analysis of this development closer to launch. And of course, uh, do head out to our propertylimbrance.com website to click on the insights button because that's where all our insights and research are located. And, and also speak to our new launch consultants if you have any questions about which new launches are more worthy of a consideration than others. Take note that Oahu residences will likely open for preview on 27th of March. And of course, do give us a call if you have any questions and click on the link down below for more information. My name is Melvin Lim. And uh, thank you for watching till the end of this video. We hope that this helps you to make an informed decision. Stay tuned and meantime, take care.